match. Tough start to the game, pretty hard to recover from that. Yeah, playing at this level, uh, playing with 12. Um, but, you know, I, I just spoke to the players there about, you know, how hard they wanted to work for each other through those, throughout the game. I thought, you know, we put ourselves actually in positions at times where, you know, we, we were quite dominant. But uh, I guess, you know, fatigue comes in at some stage. But, uh, you know, playing a longer game and, you know, when you're playing sort of with a man down, it's, you know, you've got to, sort of really try and bury the opposition into the corners and, you know, fatigue finds you at some stage. Um, but, you know, I'm actually really super proud of their efforts. I've got to say, look, individuals are out on their feet. Um, yeah, so it, it made it a bit tough, but, you know, one thing I do know about this, this group, that they've really shifted the dime on where they see and how hard they want to work uh, for the jersey. So that's something there that, you know, we'll, we'll continually push moving forward. Mate, how did you see the centre-off? Well... And I, I think uh, earlier on in the year, I, you know, I think he, uh, he ended up with a broken jaw, I think, and there was no send-off. Um, you know, so it's a big call at this at this level. I mean, it's you know, tackle. You know, he was falling, and um, but again, I'll have to have another look at it. But you know, I think it's a massive call for a for a game like this. Jack, Paul, you were pretty um, animated with uh, with Ashley Klein. What did you think? What did you say to him? Oh, yeah, it was a tough one. Yeah, I didn't expect him to get sent off, if I'm being honest. Mm. Just probably because of the enormity of the game, but that's the way it went, you know. It was tough, but as as Matt said, there was periods of the game we were going to take a lot of confidence from. They're probably the first 20 minutes of the second half, I thought we were on top, you know, with 12 men. So, got to give a lot of credit to the lads. They worked really hard. And we, we put ourselves in a position there to be, in a, you know, punch his chance at the back end, which is nice. Joey, well, you would have spoken to him. You would have been dreaming about this mate for ages, and yeah. it was over very quickly for him. How's oh, he I'd, felt? I'd imagine he's got a fair bit of emotion rolling around inside at the moment. But one thing we're going to do is that we, we get around him. That's that's what we do. Um, you know, as you just said, it, you know, they made the decision, so uh, we now look after our own. And you were able to plug the gap there, sort of later on in the first half and into the second half. But did you feel like as a team, you guys were able to react quick enough? Um, yeah, once he was sent off. Well, it takes a bit of time just to try and get that adjustment. Yeah. I mean, you know, you've got two smart halves in the opposition that are looking for that that top of that area of where the player is. So, you know, the boys did adjust on the run very quickly. Um, but they were able to capitalise on it, you know, and once all of a sudden you need to flip an extra player across and people are adjusting, all of a sudden, you know, the, you've got two smart players in the opposition having to look up and, and seeing the opportunities of uh, a short sword. So, yeah, you know, I thought the boys actually adjusted quite well. But, um, yeah, I mean, you, you never... You never probably plan for having a bloke off um, in a circumstance like that where I thought, you know, it was, it was a line call, honestly. Like, you're playing in a game like this and it's a massive line call and, um, yeah, it's uh, disappointing to see him get sent off. Um, but they called that and that's the way it is. And there was a lot of talk in the build-up about your bench and whether you had enough cover there. When a guy gets sent off, does cover help at all? Like in terms of well, I don't think anyone's ever planned for a send-off in a, uh, an Origin game, so... Um, yeah, we had all our rotations, everything covered. You know, and I thought, you know, Hutto went out there in the centres, and we had Angus out in the centres at some stage, and they actually covered that really well. But when you're 12 men, it's, uh, you know, you, you've got a, your middle is just working that hard. Um, so, you know, and I, I really felt that the boys worked really hard for each other. Um, you know, you could see times there where, mate, the effort of some of the, t and as Jakey just said, like we come out in the second half and they did exactly what we planned. Um, but unfortunately, you know, they got it. We probably missed a couple of tackles that led to sort of long range tries, which, um, you know, turns you around. Should you be leniency because it's an origin match? Well, I don't know whether you call it leniency, but I just spoke about it before where, um, you know, earlier in the year, there was nothing happened when, you know, he broke his jaw. So mm. I guess this one was line ball because he was actually falling. Um, you know, and he, obviously the height of that just last moment had uh, Joey um, clip him a bit, but big call and a big game like this. Mm. How do you there be 8,000 fans out there and that effectively kills the game very early on. Does the game need to look at maybe after 10 minutes being able to substitute that one? Oh, those sorts of things are definitely worth looking at, but I... But yeah, you, know, you made a call. They made a call, and um, yeah, you know, I actually have already received a lot of messages from a lot of people saying how hard the boys tried in that circumstance. So, you know, people see that, but you know, it doesn't help us right at this moment because you know it was uh, you know the preparation that the boys have had and the way they're really working towards what you know it, 
uh, this origin space stands for is um, you know, being exceptional from the players. But at the end of the day, we know that we, we're chasing a result. I know Match, you've got can a lot of can faith in your team, but uh, did you feel like at that moment that it was a bridge too far to be able to get back in an origin game? Uh, no, I didn't actually. No, no, because I've, I've felt what the players have uh, and what they've um, spoken about through the week. And as we said, we had moments, but you know, it's, it's always a challenge when you're a man down. Jake, what was the message out there on the field when that happened? <coughs> Obviously, it was seven minutes in, eight minutes in. Yeah, just to keep fighting. Obviously, as Matt said, we've had a great week. You know, it's been a great week of preparation. So we come in with a lot of confidence, you know, and she said you don't plan for that sort of thing, but just keep fighting, keep working hard and just do our best, mate. And as we said, mate, we've got to take some confidence and be pretty proud of some of the efforts there. Was, um, that was really pleasing, yeah. Uh, I won't make any comment about someone's game until I go back and have a look at it. So it's, yeah. Um, yeah, they're obviously a pretty disappointed change room in there and I'm not going to um, talk about people's performances here. I'll, I'll have a look at it first and talk to them individually. Um, you know, that's, that's what I'll be doing. There were certainly some standout performances, though, <coughs> I think. Probably like Zach Lomax and Liam Martin. Yeah, I thought Angus Crichton. You know, that, I thought across the board, like, you know, Payne Hask covered a lot through the middle and you know, through circumstance, or, you know, Jakey did some great things at the start, but you know, the rotation of what we had just didn't allow us to sort of get that back on, having to cover the back rows and, and plug the edges. So, you know, that's, that's, um, there was a number of good performances in and around uh, you know, parts of the game that I'll definitely have a look at. Match, how do you get them turned around quickly now? Like, obviously, it's a hard task winning two on the road to win the series from here. How do you try and turn things around quickly? Uh, I've been in this circumstance before, so I, I know exactly what we'll do. Yeah, all of them. Obviously, talk to the players, and you know you have 13 players out there. Well, the whole game's a different ball game. So, uh, yeah, I'm really confident in where the place, or sorry, where the players are taking uh, what we're doing. Jake, can that 10, 20 minutes either side of half time where you guys got yourself back into the game with 12 men? Can that be something that galvanises you going into these last two games to try and turn it around? Definitely, without doubt. As as you said, we t take a lot of belief from that, and uh, I think the, the boys showed a lot of fight. You know, so. But yeah, we're going to take that take that period moving forward. And as we said, that that twenty minute period was was really dominant period with a man down, which was um really pleasing. But as Matt said, it's a it's a long game, you know. We've got to do it for longer periods, albeit you know we were down, but albeit we've got to do it for longer. So we'll take confidence in that, and we'll take some belief, and we'll yeah, we'll keep we'll keep working hard. This year, NRL on Nine is your one stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action, seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast, get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour, grab a seat on the couch for that. And of course, my favourite, Fred in the Own. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm, subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.